Are you an adventurer looking to take your hunt to the next level? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. All right, we're we're rolling now. So this is uh, this welcome is the, to Lander, Bo. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for uh, having me. It's you know you guys have been inviting me out here for quite a few years now, and and finally decided to to make the trip. And I'm thankful that I did. It's been been really cool to to get to see everything. Yeah. And uh, so I guess before we get rolling here, so Cade Mastis has been on the podcast what, three times now? Yeah, I think so. Maybe Sounds four, right. something like that. Mike Lilligren's been on before. And uh, Brendan Weaver, this is your first time. It's my first time. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for letting me be part of the group. Yeah, yeah. Finally. Yeah, we've, we've, these guys had said, like, they had to wait a little bit before you, you were able to, to come on, but. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had to prep Bo quite a bit for Brendan. Yeah. yeah. Well, Appreciate it's, it. It's funny. So uh, for everybody listening, these are the, what, the three founders of mm -hmm. Maven here. And I, and, you know, Brendan's in marketing, which is kind of my route, you know, through Maven and, and doing things here, but I'd never met Brendan in person. Until. Yeah. And I think we've dealt with each other for like six years. Yeah. I think actually, I think it's seven or eight when yeah. counting the shows yeah. at the beginning. So yeah, that's uh, it's kind of wild. We don't let Brendan out of the house too much, so you have to come to his house. Yeah, and now you're here. <laughs> this is Brendan's house. I'm more effective here than I am at a show. Okay, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's it's uh, pretty awesome to be able to see the the new facility that that you guys have here and built in Lander. And Lander, Wyoming, is an absolutely beautiful location. Not that anybody should move here, right? No, no, it's terrible. The weather it's is closed. really, really bad. Yeah, there's no housing, but you can stop by and visit. That is actually true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It seems like there's a lot of room. There's a, there's a lot of room, but that's all reservation over there. Oh. Yeah. So it's either will, what you can see is wilderness or reservation. So you can't really move. You have to move that direction, like towards South Pass or a little bit towards Riverton. There's some space by okay. the dump. I gotcha. <laughs> By the dump. <clears throat> so how how did you guys all get together to to I guess start this thing? Yeah, I mean, so this is a story we've told quite a few times, but we all worked together at a previous outdoor company in Riverton called Brunton. Um, so I went to work there in two thousand three, I believe. They had already been working there together for a few years, um, but that was. 21 years ago that we met over yeah. there and we worked there for a while until they went through a corporate buyout and um, we all had the opportunities to move with that corporation or uh, go our own way and so we went our own way and um, that would have been 2008 we started um, another company together doing product development for other companies and did that for a while until we um had the brilliant idea around the bonfire drinking lots of beers to uh, start an optics company, and here we are. Yeah, it's it's funny. Uh, I guess the best the best ideas come in those sort of environments. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure Brendan and myself we we solved the world's problems last night uh, after you guys went home. You know, early we didn't we didn't start any other small companies though, so that was not as far as we know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> none that we can talk about. Yeah, well, that's fair. Yeah. Until we sign an NDA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that's. Uh, I, I and I don't want to go too deep into the the backstory of of Maven because we have talked about that here and stuff before. But you know, with the it's it's cool to see it grow over the last what is it ten or eleven years in business now? Yep, ten. ten. Yeah, 10, ten, 10 last July. So yeah, we're moving into our eleventh year. Um, we've been in this building for almost a almost a year now. We moved in in March, early March. Took possession in late Feb, but we weren't really here yet. But yeah, you're basically here on the one year anniversary and a little after the ten year anniversary of. of Did Maven. you get to go see the last two places we were in? Uh, no. Oh no, we never drove him around to see the like evolution. You got to do that before. Oh, you're picking him up to. Yeah, it's going to be a little tight. I can maybe run you around. If you run into a little You've extra time, see. I can give you a, it's like get 15 a, minutes. Get full appreciation of, of where we are now. you got to yeah. see the other places. Yeah, I could, was, I'm assuming a lot smaller. Well, we started in a garage that was the, about the size of this room, 
That was, and Kate and I shared that office and Brennan worked from his house. Then we moved into a facility that was like 2,100 square feet. It's like a little cinder block building. And we all worked there for a while. I did a bunch of remodeling and, but renting it. Then we bought a 5,000 square foot building just under, but 5,000 square foot building. And we were in there for three years. And then we built this 27,000 square foot building. Okay. Wow. That, uh, yeah, that's, a, that's a big jump on the last one here, but it's, it's really cool to see too. Like Cade okay, just gave me the full tour of it and seeing from in typical Maven fashion, just from the way that I've seen it of how organized and just planned out everything is. And it's, it's, it's pretty awesome to be able to see and up to what over 20 employees now. Yeah. 22. Yep. And that's, that was one of the fun things about being able to start from the ground up is, you know, we sat down, we were limited by the um, shape of the lot, but that was really it. We were able to set down the three of us with our architect and just kind of start laying out how we wanted things to flow and what percentage we wanted office space and um, you know, what room we had to grow in the future and make sure that we were trying to, you can never truly future proof anything, but having the ability to lay things out, knowing that what we're doing today could be completely different in five years. And we didn't want to limit ourselves to just what we thought was possible currently. So I think there, we were able to put in a lot of growth. You know, we actually rent some offices out to outsiders upstairs. We didn't walk down that hall. Um, but we wanted to build them for that future capacity for ourselves, but we're making the most of it now by renting them out to some people in the community. And our, you know, we have a lot of vertical space left in the warehouse where we, you know, we've only gone really vertical in the back third. Everything else could go much more vertical and much tighter packed. And so we've built in a lot of white space to be able to grow into as we continue to evolve. And we actually even bought the lot just south of us too. So we, we have room for like, totally unexpected growth like if things get just different yeah. a lot for us we could build another warehouse or a um a 3d archery course yeah i i it was funny we were walking through uh when Cade was showing me everything and just everything that the employees have here in the archery range and just you know even just the, the break rooms and the showers spoiled and i was like hey uh i think this whole you know doing business for myself thing maybe i'll put that off to the side and come work for you guys <laughs> i always full-time podcaster i used to always say the problem with being self-employed is you work for a jerk yeah, yeah, yeah. Boss I've ever had. yeah i hate looking in the mirror every morning <laughs> can't blame you the only thing we it's don't have haircut. here are beds so so you know, when you come to town, you can just stay here. You don't have to get a room somewhere. Yeah, that would. Yeah, because everything else is here. Full on kitchens. And, I mean, showers and yeah, showers. We got a couple of cots in the gear room that you. That's can true. Check out. Yeah, that's oh, true. Yeah. Big cots pads. And bed roll and yeah, yeah, and and anybody can go in and rent out gear, a whole bunch of different stuff yeah. in there. And that that was pretty drift boats. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> the, the, the whole screen behind you just flipped off oh did it no yeah. anyway <clears throat> um yeah drift boats clay throwers little yeah wall tents. the whole thing yeah but it's on putting it on oh, a yeah. podcast yeah no it was it's pretty cool to be <laughs> yeah you guys are like brothers <laughs> it's 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 pretty comical to see but uh yeah to be able to to, to rent all that stuff out and do it it's, it's a really cool work environment. And I mean, from before I was in, you know, doing the podcast stuff full time, I worked in more of a corporate type environment and this does not have that feel to it at all. Good. Good. That's our, honestly, that's our intention. Like we yeah. care a lot about that. We like, I like kid mentioned, we left that previous company because of that corporate chaos and we we're all right with chaos. In fact, I think we sort of love chaos, but we are not okay with corporate. So mm -hmm. we do not want it to be that. Yeah. And, and know what's funny is, so one of the best questions I got asked at the Western Hunt Expo, so I was there working for you guys at the booth and a guy came up and he's looking at, he's looking at the B2s, the nine by 45s, he's looking at the spotting scopes and he's like, why does Maven do, do everything differently? Is that just the plan? You know, as far as, you know, the nine by 45 and 11 by 45 and just the way, you know, say the spotting scopes focus and, and that, is that, is that by design to try to just be a little bit different or is it just, that's to make, you know, the product that you want to operate that way. You just kind of started from scratch and, and made it make sense. Part of what really allows us to do that is the direct to consumer model. Um, you know, when we worked in the more corporate environment, 
you're really constrained by what the buyer at Cabela's, what the buyer at Sportsman's Warehouse, what they are looking for to fill a gap within their um, their optics counter or their compass counter or whatever. And innovation isn't necessarily what they're looking for. They're looking to fill a price point and a certain gap that they want to fill in between a $200 pair and a $1,000 pair. They want a $600 pair that blends in. Um, we were able to sit down and really look from the product first and go, okay, if we make a great product and all we have to do is convince the consumer that it's great, we don't have to convince a middleman that he can make enough money off of it, where do we want to start from there? We have the um, benefit of being able to work with some really great engineers um, at our optics partners in Japan. And we sat down with them and we're like, hey, what would you build? Oh, no one ever asks us this. This this is the hot rod. This is what we would do. Like, great. That kicks ass. Let's do it. Yeah. And so and then that 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 goes all the way through how we run the business overall. Like we we make what we want to make and then we do what we have to do to be successful with that. And so we don't have to do more. We don't have to start we don't start with the success and then back into like here's how much money we need to make. Here's like what our margin needs to be, blah, blah, blah. We figure out what we want to make, what it costs, then what, you know, what we have to make on that, you know, just put our margin on that. And we don't, we don't try to price it to fit in the market some space. Mm -hmm. Um, We just make what the best we can and sell it what we have to sell it for and let, let the consumer reap that benefit. But our goal all along, and we've told you this on the podcast before, I mean, really our goal is to live in Lander and do the things we want to do. We want to raise our families here. We want to, and now that's extended to our employees and you know, like we want them to be happy and successful, not just at Maven, but in Lander and, uh, you know, get out to do the things they love to do. And that, I think that's, it's true of our product. It's true of our atmosphere here. We, we're, it's, it's hitting that goal first. Yeah, no, that, that makes, makes a whole lot of sense. And, and then Brendan, you're kind of the, the guy behind the design and the look and the feel of maven which is something that from day one has been attractive from you know the eye of seeing it and i've always liked the the branding aspect of it and then you know with you and your team with cody and craig just it's it's pretty cool so is that is that something that i mean obviously you're pretty passionate about it from we talked for you know four hours last night about a lot of this stuff and you could hear it in your voice it's like you're just as passionate now as, as you've ever yeah, been I think, about it. You know, <clears throat> like these guys were talking about with our, <clears throat> where we came from and having to think about, um, product development, um, what everything looked like through the buyer and then the consumer it was, it, it's like you never felt like you were doing what you wanted to do. You were doing what you thought might be cool or good. Mm-hmm. And now we get, we control everything here. You know, I've got two guys. We don't use any agencies for, for the, the creative side, which is, was my goal um, when we started the company. Um, two super creative guys that, that work with me every day. <clears throat> and, you know, that, that I think is when you own it and all the decisions are in that room, um, you know, I, I think we have a good feel for, for what looks good and what people like, but we get to control all of it. And it's, it's such a fun job. Um, a lot of companies farm that kind of stuff out. You know, they work with creative agencies to do product design or ad design or web design, whatever. And we, we don't do any of that. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. And even down to, you know, the, the naming of the hats, it's funny. It's always after people that, that you guys know and have some sort of experience with it. It always cracks me up seeing that, you know, the Jeff hat and, you know, like have go through it. It's just, it's not typical of what you would see from, from that standpoint. And just, again, from what I've learned is you guys don't operate in any sort of bucket. It's just kind of how, how yeah, you in the end, that it. kind of stuff is what makes it fun for people, you know? Yeah. Most people go through the website and they look at that and they're like, what the, what, why the heck is a wheeler? Yeah. <laughs> and nobody ever, but it's, it's cool for us. It's all of our friends and yeah. you know, family or people that we've, we've met along the way. So hopefully there'll be a, a bow hat if we can figure out what's, what, what the bow hat is. 
What, let's brainstorm on here. What, Cade? What is your what is your what is Kate your idea <laughs> of what the bow hat looks like? I think you're wearing a bow hat right now, I and mean, that seems very like low Cheesy trucker ass camo. <laughs> Yeah, low profile, kind of off brand with a really busy logo that you can't read. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> That's my Deer Camp logo that was designed for a shirt that I put on a patch. To yeah, put on a hat. it would, it would, no, it wouldn't look good on a shirt either. Really big, um, it does look good on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's scratch it. Hey, I wore my East Meets West hat yesterday. You did, I was put riding for the brand with the, yeah, with the old logo, with the old logo. W- which yeah. which is something that you told me you're like you I, need to change that from day one. Oh, dude, and I was so right. Yeah, I was so right. But you gave me the hat, and you know, it's I almost wore my digital deer East meets West shirt. I have that. Yeah, I have that shirt. It sits in my hunting kit all the time. It's like my my shirt that you know, if I'm really bloody, I can put on right after the hunt. Just I, it, um, you make me think of like cleaning Blood. up after a hunt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to take that. But. Yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> okay, so it's you good. didn't have to do much cleanup yesterday. It didn't sound like. Ooh, no, that is true. No, we went uh, chucker hunting yesterday. So Mike, Mike had texted me before we came out here and was like, "Hey, what do you want to do?" Because I was supposed to come into the office and found out I was closed for a hall, day, hall yeah. yeah, for President's Day. And you're like, "You want to go elk hunt on a depredation tag for cow elk, or do you want to go?" chucker hunting and uh yeah i wanted to i've never bird hunted before so i was like yeah i'd love to go chucker hunting and do that and And it was really late season chucker hunting usually closes at the end of january but they pushed it to the end of february this year so it's late season these birds have been super pushed but our buddy kirk who we have a hat named after um our buddy kirk took us out and we saw a lot of birds yeah a lot of birds yeah, Long and, way away. And, and 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 the funny thing, so Kirk and it was like, oh, you know, I hope we can, you know, see a bird. Like I'm just, if not, it'll be a nice walk. And and what I've learned in the short period of time being around him is he underplays a lot of things and or underpromises and kind of over delivers on on all of that. And it was right. So it was he phenomenal. underpromised the hike. He over delivered on that. It was definitely way more of a hike than he sort of sold it at. Um, undersold the number of birds we'd see. Yeah, saw way more birds than he projected, and and definitely um, did not sell us on how many times we would shoot. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't sell that at all. Yeah, we each shot once and missed. But yeah, chucker hunting is interesting because it's and and I was told this from other people. They're like, you're going to be going up, down, up, down, a lot of steep, rough country, and that's that's kind of exactly what we did. Yeah, I think we did three and a half miles. I didn't look at the elevation gaining up, but. It, we hiked about three and a half miles and I bet we did 5,000 feet of up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It was straight up and down the whole time and ended up taking a couple tumbles. You, you took some hard tumbles. I took a hard tumble, a couple hard tumbles, but we both slid about halfway down that one slope. Yeah. That was, I wish I had video of that. That was entertaining as hell. I think for, for you, for me to watch you. Yeah. Yeah. He's making fun of me as I'm sliding. So Kirk was like dogs on point out here. Like there's, definitely birds but you got to get out here quick because the birds are going to get nervous and there's no quickness to slippery snowy stuff and mike's like bo just go around this side of the hill instead of going straight up over and as soon as i took a step there created a slab avalanche mini avalanche and i went down the hill and then i took another step and went (laughs) down another 20 feet i think it's all told he's slid about 50 feet and yeah. then I got all cocky, you know, I'm like a mountaineering guy, right? So I kick out about three steps, and then I slide right pat, right by him, <laughs> same place. Did either of you get to the bird before it flew? Not on that run. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we did not. Actually, it is fun actually, watching. the dog gave up. It is fun watching Kirk's dog. Yeah. Like, he, he's a well-trained dog, and I've been out with him a t- couple of times, pheasant hunting and sage grouse hunting with, uh, took my dog out as well, who's not nearly as well-trained, but... It's fun to watch good dogs work. That dog ran his ass off. I mean, if we did three and a half miles, well, but Kirk had a GPS on him, so he did 10 and a half miles. Yeah. But they didn't have elevation, so he probably also did triple the elevation gain and lost that weight. Maybe more, because he was oh, yeah. way up and way down. Um, yeah, and every time we Cormac said 10 and a half miles? 10 and a half miles, because he has a GPS collar on him, so he tracks that distance. Oh. In like four, like three, three hours. Yeah, it was yeah. only three hours. Yeah, it was insane, and it was funny every time that Kirk would say, "Hey, we'll stand up here and we'll let 
let Cormac go down there and see if there's any birds, and we don't have to walk down there every time. Every he'd find time one he'd get on point, way down in the bottom, and then we'd have to try to run down there and get <laughs> get there. And Cormac was a little bit pissed at us because we weren't getting there quick enough. Yep. At, uh, Especially on the uphill hunts, because he'd do the same thing. We get to the bottom, and they would have flushed off, and then he's like runs up the hill and gets on point again. And like, okay, let's run up that hill, and so we like yeah. huff and puff up the hill, get there. And he was just like, what the hell, dude? Yeah. Like, that took you, like, 20 minutes. Well, I'm sure they said this to you yesterday a couple of times, but they say that chucker hunting is a calorie new, uh, negative sport. <laughs> it's you the, cannot shoot enough yep. chucker to replenish the energy burn. That's yeah, the celery of hunting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> calorie efficient. Uh, yeah. No, oh, they, no, had they not... tasted better than celery last night, though. They did. They did. We were lucky, and I also ruined – I may have jinked the entire hunt because I started our hunt saying it doesn't matter if we have success today because we have an entire bag of Chucker and Huns back at the office to eat tonight. And they both – Kirk and Bo both said, dude, you just ruined it because now there's no pressure to have success. Yeah, why – yeah, I didn't have any motivation. I was like, oh, we're going to have to clean so it. It's entirely all my this fault. Stuff. I take full responsibility. That's why, like, you know, when the birds would fly by, I just looked at them. I didn't, hey, didn't shoot. Yeah. Didn't want to waste the shells and have to do all that work. I was like, I got a good meal being cooked when, you know, I get back. And we did. We had a good meal last night. That was really good. Brennan cooked up the, oh, and Kate also cooked up some chucker, that tasty sauce. And yeah, had a good, good time all around. So, um, yeah, it was a good, good event. So, and we're lucky to have a great space in our building to, um, we, uh, our pronghorn lounge is a great place to hang out and have a dinner and yeah, you know, drink some beers and. No, or whiskey, I, switch to whiskey. I appreciated that so much. And all of you guys lo- love cooking from the from the looks of it and sounds of it. And it was all great food. I was not hungry afterwards. I was thirsty. Yeah, but which showed. Tried to solve that problem. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it started off nice and slow. And then you guys are like, oh, let's, you know. Let's have a little shot of fireball, and then that kind of kicked. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Kicked. Everybody loves a shot of fireball. <laughs> uh, Turning I don't know point they, of the evening. Like, I don't know if if everyone actually loves the shots of fireball, but everyone loves doing them. Yes. Yeah. Every love. Them. Yeah, people fight about fireball, but it's tasty stuff. Yeah. I I don't know. I've become. I, I like it less than I used to, but I still. I Can't still say no. didn't seem like it. you didn't like it last night. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's fair. It's a very iconic drink for me because I don't have it very often, but it's like certain golf tournaments we do uh, a few fireball shots or like that. Like the shot last night at after dinner was uncommon. It's not, we don't typically break it out on a on a random Monday night. Random Monday, <laughs> random Monday night, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that. sometimes for putt putt we might do a little fireball on fridays but yeah if you chilling up on a thursday or friday we we might have not gone home no. between dinner and this yeah <laughs> so it's probably good that it was a monday night yeah <laughs> yeah no that's for sure and and also i think uh what's what's interesting is what you as i mentioned earlier about you know living here in lander all of you guys like to hunt and do all the stuff that your products are exactly used for. And so our, our, I guess I don't know you, Brandon, but I know Mike and Kate, you guys mostly rifle hunt more so than bow hunting. Is that true? I, I typically bow hunt every year or I take my bow out every year. So mm-hmm. I have a few extra days to walk around and then I kill something with my rifle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely a, I'm new to bow hunting. I like shooting my bow. Um, I've shot a couple things with my bow, but I'm not, a regular bow hunter. Every year I'm like, this is the year that I'm going to elk hunt for bow. And so this right now I'm saying that about next year. Yeah. Cause I've got a, we've got a bow tech. I think you're going to talk to him a little bit later, but a yeah. guy in the office now that's, that's helped me tune up my bow. We had a little, we've been doing some in-house competitions. Um, I'm going to get my, my hunting arrows ready to go. We're going to put a 3d course out this spring out here. And I, this is the year by gum that I'm going to go out and, and bow hunt. Yeah, I've got it. I mean, by this year, I mean next year, but I'm this prepping season. now. This season. Yeah, I guess it is season. this season. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've got a, a dozen uh, Reinhardt targets coming from, uh, that we bought from TAC, from Total Archery Challenge. Yeah. Um, they'll actually be here on the 22nd, so we'll get those put up in the gear room for now, and then when spring comes, we'll do a little uh, multi-position uh, 3D tournament out here. We're going to buy some uh, 
some Boy Scout recurve bows, and so and do a, re a competition with those, so everyone's on an even playing field. So you don't necessarily have to have a thousand dollar Hoyt out there to shoot. Everyone yeah. will be no barrier to entry. So do a few things like that to make it fun and keep everyone involved. And yeah, that's that is that is fun. What about you, Brandon? I kind of got on the the archery stuff. We kind of all did together. I don't know. I don't know how long ago was that when we, we all got bows. Yeah. And I just figured out that I wasn't going to spend enough time to where I felt confident enough to hunt with a bow. And so I'm a rifle guy. Okay. Nice. And I would rather spend the time doing that and knowing that I'm, I like to get close. And I, I think there's this misconception. Like if you're a rifle hunter, you're, you're a long distance guy. And I, I, I'd rather get 50 yards away with yeah. a rifle you know yeah so. no and that's you know, it's funny because i've always i don't want to say i've identified at, with bow hunting more so than gun hunting but i've always liked the seasons that that lined up with bow hunting a lot more so i've done it but the last i guess five years i've got into doing some more rifle hunting and i love it I, i'm i'm an opportunist whatever you know seasons that i have the ability to go hunt and do that whatever weapons that's uh, allowed at that time i'll do it it's fun season definitely impacts it like we were out um i had a cow tag late season cow tag up here one of the depredation ones and mike and i went out one morning and when we left the truck it was minus six like okay you know archery elk september in wyoming hunting in a t-shirt versus minus six wrapped up in nine layers trying to shoot a cow elk i'm like I'll take the archery hunting. Even if I'm not successful, I'm going to put more days in because it's a lot more enjoyable. Yeah. And we had elk at about 700 yards, so we just sat there and drank coffee. They And they watched him just step off the property we had access to. So <laughs> we did not have a successful morning, but it was a tasty cup of coffee and a beautiful sunrise. Yeah. But we're <laughs> what's cool about where we live is you can get up in the morning. Like the I was telling you yesterday about my mule deer hunt. That was on a work day. Um, you can see the red butte out this window. I was just right around that red butte up on the hill. Got up in the morning, went up, shot a deer, got on a nine o'clock conference call up there, <laughs> had stopped by the butcher and back to the office by 10 a.m. That's incredible. And we've had one of the guys um, that that works out in the warehouse was hunting out there. And he's like, if you guys get on the spot. We've got a spotting scope up on the, you know, up in the window upstairs. He's like, you can see where I am. You can see, I can see the building. If you look out there, you can see me. And he had, was he elk hunting out there? Yeah, uh, deer. deer. So he had a deer down. He's just like, can you see me out here? And we're, you know, it's just right there. Yeah. You know, it's awesome. <laughs> That's hilarious. Elk hunting and deer hunting to the West and antelope to the East. And yeah, it's a good combo. Fly yeah. fishing just right off the ridge. Yeah. Man, that's 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 incredible. And they, Mike, but the weather's crappy. But the weather's crappy. To, and there's yeah, no I was gonna say you're not you're not helping with n not selling yeah. the area. Yeah. But didn't you say you uh, rafted to work one day? I you... did. Yeah. So I there's a river that river that you can fly fish the the middle fork of the Popojas, just a hundred yards down the slope right here. Not even. And uh, yeah, it's also just thirty yards off the back of my house. So I just yeah I walked up got grabbed my pack raft and a backpack, walked down the hill, inflated it, rafted to work, and That's walked up here. That's the most Wyoming thing that I've ever... It was great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I still need to combo it with a bike ride or something so I can, like, do the full loop, but... How would you get the, the raft home, then? Would you... It's a pack raft. It's like... Oh, oh yeah. It, it, yeah, it weighs seven pounds. Okay. So my you... raft weighs seven... All my gear together. The heaviest thing's my helmet. So, yeah, it's a really lightweight. That's what Kirk and I were talking about yesterday. We completely pack rafts. They're so. tiny, tiny. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they're the size of a little personal kayak. Yeah. You know, but yeah. Imagine a floating coffin. <laughs> Roughly that size. Yeah. And Craig, Craig's done a little bit. He went to Alaska with the owner of this pack raft company a few years back. There's some pictures did out in the hallway hunt. right here. Really? Yeah, did a caribou, caribou pack raft caribou hunt. So they're so small that you can carry your hunting gear, your camping gear, and your pack raft, like, all in one backpack. And the pack rafts are great because they have a zipper in them. You can actually fill the raft, not just with air, but with your gear. 
So you can you can put your gear and shit in, in your bladder, pack raft yeah. in the bladder, yeah, and then zip it up and inflate it, oh. and so it packs up pretty, you know. So it's it's kind of a cool self contained unit. Who, who makes that? So um, there's a there's a couple different brands out there, and I know you're going to ask me what the name of this brand, and I cannot think of it off the top of my head. Can you Alpaca. remember Alpaca? Thank you. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah I've heard yeah. of those. They're like very in high demand now because yeah. I've it's heard a of cool, people saying they take like a year to be able to get very trendy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that. I'm ahead of my time. <laughs> so you, oh, you're ahead of it, okay? Because <laughs> I've had it for like yeah, you, you were a maven eight years, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I have no skill, but yeah, but I have the gear. That makes sense. But uh, going back to Brendan's comment about getting close with the rifles, you know, it's one. It's funny. My out of all of the scopes that you guys make, my still my favorite is the RS2. Just simple just works. lightweight lightweight yeah. 12 Great ounces light gathering yeah yeah that i run it on everything too yeah i love i love that i remember when i was first looking at you know picking a scope my brother's the gun guy being gunsmith and and hunter and he's like i'm like you know looking i'm like look at the maven scopes and tell me which one you think that would be the best you know for me and where we're going through it and he's like he's like this one and i'm like well this one's got you know it could do this and that and all these features to it and he's like for you just simply just a simple scope for hunting and and yeah, man, he's like I, dude you're not smart enough for these other stuff <laughs> i yeah. realized as soon as i said that that yeah he his way of saying that to me was probably yeah. you know demeaning but well, a lot of people think it's like i gotta get the biggest one with the most features it's like that's that's not the case i've shot more animals with the rs2 than all of our other scopes combined yeah yeah me too i mean it's what i run on both my regular hunting rifles and but it is fun to go out to the range with the big RS4 and to just nail that steel yeah. at 1,500 yards and uh, and have all the capabilities to do, you know, whether you're holdover or dial to shoot or however you want to run it. So it's fun to have the technology. It's fun to use the gear. But when you're regular, just pounding the ground, I like simple too. Yeah, especially for like, especially whitetail hunting too. Mm. But I had the RS2. I mean, I shot my caribou in Alaska with it, a bear in Montana with it, multiple whitetails. It was just like, it's a pretty cool all around scope. But I've but then this year I was using the RS1, and I really liked that because I went to a long range shooting course and learned how to dial and do all that stuff. And you know, I was ringing steel at 750 yards, and you know, off of not off of a bench, just off of different shooting positions, learning how to, to steady yourself and do that. And I, I thought that was, that was really cool and took that to Alaska, hoping to shoot a moose, but didn't, didn't, uh, find one legal, but I was able to determine that it wasn't legal from using the MOA and the scope and measure how wide it was. And because it was a first focal plane, you knew no matter what power you could use, utilize that. And 100%. the RS1 and the RS1.2 are probably the most versatile scopes we have. Yeah. Like you just, whether you're a dial to shoot or a holdover guy, I mean, which one you want to roll with, but it's a, uh, they're great scopes, two and a half to 15. You got everything you need from yeah. close quarters to. Yeah. That's what I put on my 300 short this year. And that's when I got the elk and the deer back to back. Okay. Uh, days using that this fall which was the 1.2 yep yeah. yeah that that scope is really cool and i couldn't believe how popular it was at western hunt expo because of this uh this test that's become infamous apparently on Rockside called <laughs> the drop test and what do, do you guys want to share the details of what that test involved and why the scope is sure so they've had uh they've had variations of this drop test for a while a couple of different testers have done it um, but kind of the formalicious, I think his username is, is kind of the, the primary tester. And he, you know, puts it on a gun, a known gun with known mounts, drops it on a, on a pad on soft ground and, and then, uh, reshoots it to see if it holds zero. Which um, is more realistic. I mean, you talked about some of the variants. They did some like drops on concrete and stuff before, which is just not realistic of what happens yeah. in the field when you drop your gun. But. And so it, it, it passed their drop test, and it's one of the first scopes. I think only two or three total scopes have ever passed this drop test. So when it came out on the market, um, or when it came out on their forum, obviously that drove a lot of, uh, lo lot of demand for it. Um, now we're getting... Part of the reason it's funny to us is now we're starting to get 
customers, hey, I for my YouTube channel of seven people, I decided to repeat the drop test, but I didn't check for rocks and I shattered the scope. Can, the, can I can I get a new one? <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, everybody's a tester. Yep. Yeah, yeah, hard on equipment. Everybody's an influencer these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, uh, it that was not no 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 in, no no yeah no insult intended. No, here. I, I I understand. Not everybody's bow, but everyone's an influence. I I understand Keed enough to to not be offended by anything that he says, uh, but no, that's it's it's pretty funny uh, seeing that, and I'm like, that's first of all, if anybody has you know buys a scope you should try to take care of it even if it can you know that's for accidents not to your freaking gun take let, care of your all of those let, all your stuff. yeah let other people do that do that that testing but i guess that's the perks of the lifetime no fault warranty well it does say intentional abuse and so yeah <laughs> running out and throwing it on a concrete driveway probably isn't uh oh yeah an accident yeah, so don't don't do that. <laughs> but well, let's. Uh, I think let's wrap it up with you guys and bring in the, the actual, A team. Yeah, the actual the actual employees, the people who actually people do work, things. The, the things actually do things, and I want to find out what they actually think of you guys. With That's fair. Yeah, so do we. Closed doors. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, thanks, Bo. I'm yeah. really glad you came out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, hopefully next time we can we'll get out and actually shoot things. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate Actually it. Actually shoot that. I have two hours in the car to give you a hard time, so. Yeah, I, I can't wait to go yep. to the airport with you today. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Bo. All right, thanks, thanks, thanks guys. Cool. Thanks. All right, we're back on part two of the podcast. Now we have the the real people that make it happen at Maven in here, so that's fun. So we got Craig over here, um, I guess off to my right, and then we have Sarah, and we have Jordan. So I met well, I guess I met all of you guys here in the last day day or so. But as I said with Brendan on the first podcast, I feel like, Craig, we should have met long ago. Yeah, a long time ago, considering we probably talk more than, than anyone else, or at least email or yeah. message through social or something like that. Yeah. So do you do you uh, run the social? Yep. Okay, yeah. you run the Maven yeah. social media. I, I try to, yep. I gotcha. What uh? So what? What is your kind of role here at Maven? And because you're the you were the first employee. Yep. So I, I got hired in 2016 um, through a random series of events, um, and even the guys admit that they probably weren't ready to hire somebody. Um, but uh, it just so happened that I was in the right place at the right time and ready to to move um, to a new location, and it worked out with with my wife and I. So. Um, yeah, so yeah, I got hired in 2016, hired to do creative, so um, yeah, photography, video, just creative content in general, and then marketing. Um, as far as my title goes, and I don't, I don't know if I have an actual like legit title. <laughs> I think, I think we're not big like on the title folks here. I don't know, um, but yeah, so I think on my on the business card it says creative content and marketing. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, when, when you have, you know, smaller companies, it doesn't really, nobody's really like in one specific line. Yeah. At least yeah. it seems like. Yeah. And for the longest time, like we were, everyone was kind of doing everything. So customer service, answering phone calls, answering emails, shipping, you know, warehouse stuff. So everyone was kind of doing everything. Yeah. So figuring out how to put logos on the back screen behind <laughs> me. <laughs> it actually looks good now. It does. Yeah, that that was good. It went it went out in the first 10 minutes of the the first part, so I mean, but we got we got yeah. to work on it. And we're still we're still breaking in the new building, learning learning yeah. all the ins and outs. Yeah, all this all this fancy stuff in here. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh it's funny though we were, we were saying that just talking about the logo up there in my previous life when I was doing training and stuff, it was like any time I had to use a projector that Bluetooth to this or did that, it was like nothing ever works when yeah, you need there's it always to. some kind of complication. Yeah. Yep. 100%. Well, what about you, Sarah? Um, well, I came on in 2020, um, also from a like series of random events uh, that led me here. Um, I'd been in Lander for a long time, new mic through Rotary um, and you know, one thing led to another. Yeah. Um, 
I also am not sure what my title is. I think my business card said sales analyst. Um, so I manage all of our data. Uh, so customer data, forecasting data, um, financial data. So I do a lot of that kind of analysis. Um, I was hired to manage our Amazon storefronts. So we do have three different brands over seven platforms. Mm. Um, but I'm most frequently called ODAS, other duties as assigned. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I like do a little backup in customer service. I do a little back backup for um, Mike. Uh, I am in charge of HR. Um I spend some time mood lining in the warehouse. There's a lot of things that I was doing in the warehouse that now Jordan is going to start doing. Um, so a little, like a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And so you were the, Craig, you were the first hire at Maven. And now Jordan, you're the newest one from what I hear, right? Yeah. Yeah. Started in uh first week of November. So uh, I had worked with Sarah a little bit in a previous life, and so I kind of knew her and came by and dropped off a res- uh, resume. My better half uh, got her dream job in pediatric care right down the street. Oh, okay. So we'd always talked about moving to Lander. We hunt over here, fish over here, spend a lot of time over here, and had always talked about coming over from Casper. Okay. So two and a half hours east of here. And I told her, if you know you get this job, then we'll move. And sure enough, she got it. Yeah. And so, like, oh, you called my bluff. We're going to move. So I came over. I was actually headed over here for a conference anyways and went by the Holiday Inn, printed off a resume, and came by and saw Sarah and then uh, interviewed and luckily enough got the job. And um, yeah, it's been good. been drinking through a, through a fire hose. I think what this company does uh, that's, that's pretty awesome is that when you first start off, you train in every department. So you'll go and work with Sarah. You'll go work with the warehouse folks, the shippers, all that kind of stuff, and just get a good baseline understanding of how the company operates. Yeah. And then that also provides a little bit of flexibility during this time of year when we have a lot of people at shows or if it's around like Black Friday, some people can fill in if if someone else isn't here. So uh, it's been good so far. Yeah. I mean, that that makes a whole lot of sense, especially, you know, again, small company, but being direct to consumer, you got to go to a lot of shows so people can get their hands on product and be able to see things. And, but that takes manpower to, to be able to do and take, takes people away from it. I mean, what this past weekend when I was at Western hunt, wasn't there like two other shows going Mm -hmm. on at the same time? Yeah, we I, we just surpassed the peak. I think the last count that I had, we were headed to 47 shows this year. Um, and that's like staffed mostly right in house and then from some contractors, but, and that's, and that's funny. Cause when I first started, we were, we were kind of ramping up shows and the whole goal was to figure out the best shows and focus on those, drop the rest of them. But now we're doing more, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean like, you know, yeah, being direct to consumer, um, like, yeah, you have to get out in front of people. You have to, um, yeah, educate people on the product, educate people on the brand, um, people still don't understand what direct to consumer is. So it's constant kind of like, you know, reminding people about, Hey, you know, this is an amazing product for, you know, almost half the cost, you know, of our competitors. Yeah. So, and then, you know, people getting hands on it. That's, that's a big part of it too. Cause you can't just walk into, you know, Cabela's or something like that and, you know, pick up a Maven and look at it. So, yeah. And, and yeah. So for anybody listening, you know, the direct to consumer model is basically, yeah, exactly what it sounds like go on the website, you buy a product, it goes right to you. There's not the markup of having to go to a big box store or anything else because the way that works is, yeah, okay, you have to make something for this price, but you need to make your cut and then they need to make their cut. So what you get is a giant markup that goes through it where selling direct, it's just, you know, one markup essentially and and going across the board. But the the detriment of that is people getting hands-on stuff, which the demo program program i'm sure helps out quite a bit where you can demo a product what is it for 30 days two weeks two weeks okay i was telling people that wrong at the show <laughs> uh, yeah two weeks uh so i can uh, use this all of september yeah, yeah. I, I could use this all hunting season never have to buy anything yeah um but uh yeah so that that makes sense to be able to get your hands on it and be able to see it but it's funny with been I've been working shows for Maven for seven or eight years now and seeing from the beginning of oh who are you guys to now it's there's a little bit of that stuff I've never never you know seen you before but to most of it is 
oh, I've they already know what they want to look at. It makes <laughs> it super easy. They're like, oh, I've been looking. I built this custom online twenty times at night. You know, I want to come and get my hands on it and feel it and see. Yeah, it. you just stand back and let them let them look and and make their decision. Yeah, or the the biggest thing that I've seen is my buddy has a set of these and we were on a hunt and I borrowed them and yeah. it was like, Oh, or, or my buddy, you know, said that this is the best stuff out there. Like I, I need to have this and I should throw these away and, and try it. It's, it's pretty cool to, to see that evolve through time. Yeah. Craig and I did cheap show this year and I would, I don't know, just kind of guessing, but I would say it was almost 10 to one, the amount of people that would say something to the effect of, Oh, yeah, I've heard great things about you guys. Wanted to come by and see them, as opposed to the I've never heard of you guys before. Yeah, what's yeah. what's Marvin yeah. or something? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I was using Maven stuff even before I started working here. Oh, really? And yeah, I heard about it through word of mouth and was able to look through a buddy of mine's and decided to make the switch over. So, oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, it's been good. And um, of course, I don't have like a a deep uh, you know reference point to draw back on for for being the newest employee. But yeah, it, Sheep Show was awesome. So, yeah, that would be a cool show to get to go to. Yeah, it's a good show. It's one of my favorite shows. Um, uh, Western Hunt's also my other. I was a little bummed that I didn't get to go this year. Yeah, you got pulled from the card. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Uh, I was I was sad. <laughs> I was sad because it's. I mean, it's it's always cool to go um, and see you know people at other brands that you're friends with that you've been working with. Yeah. You know. Um, so yeah, yeah, like I had to let a few people know that I was not going to be there and we couldn't have those drinks afterwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, no, no. Sheep Show's a good show. Um, uh, it's similar to Western Hunt. It's it's smaller, um, but it's it has a similar feel. So there's, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of good brands, a lot of great brands that you kind of want to be in the mix with, um, and people there know what they want, mm-hmm. and and they're they're happy to you know look at a thousand, you know, dollar pair of optics, and they're not going to just like sit put it down and walk away slowly because it's you know it's yeah. too much money. So. Yeah, that's a that's a different crowd there. I'm sure it's kind of the beauty of the like the uh, SEI and the uh, Dallas Safari Club, right? Because people are there to book hunts, so you like kind of wait around the first couple days. People come by, they look, they're like shopping for what exotic thing they want to do, and then like bam, Friday morning they've booked hunts and they're like ready to buy optics. Yeah. Um, and Molly and I spend like two days slinging as fast as we can, um, which is pretty fun. So are you saying you and Molly are the best sales? So there was a bet on the table with Mike and Cade this year about who could sell more um, at Dallas Safari Club or at SEI. And we whomped them. It was like not even a question. Um, (laughs) Like by like a lot of money, we outsold them. Um, But we had a couple things working in our favor. One, Molly knows everybody, right? Like that helps. Um, and she does lots of pre-work with international guides in particular, which is handy. So we had pre-sold a whole bunch of stuff before we got there. Um, and then we also this year got to spend time with all of their chapter heads. Um, and so all these chapters do banquets throughout the year. And so we got to spend some time talking about Maven and what they could do, what we could help them do at their banquets for auctions, table gifts, stuff like that. So we saw a lot of folks that way too, which was pretty cool. Yeah, no, it definitely sounds cool. And it's it's funny uh, about Molly knowing everybody. It, it, that's it's so true, and it's funny. You know, anybody that I've talked to, and they're like, "Oh, if if I have a problem with maybe you know how to get a hold of them," I'm like, "You call this number, you'll probably talk to Molly, mm-hmm. and uh, you know she'll help you through whatever whatever it is." I was bummed that she wasn't able to be here because I wanted to get her on the the podcast here too. But Molly's awesome. So if you're listening, Molly, you're awesome. <laughs> she's, been, she's been great yeah yeah it's, it's a it's a really cool team but i'm glad to know that 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 you think that you and her are the the a team i mean we are, are the current reigning champions and, and like anytime you can put kid and mike in their place that's, that's it is and like yeah we'll like get a lunch out of it which is great but really it's like one whole year of when they start going on and on about how they're the A team, I now can like roll my eyes and walk out of the room. Yeah, like, you're, yeah. The, you're the A plus team. Yeah, like, all right, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a whole year of bragging rights, which is totally worth it. Yeah. So, so what are the what are the, the best and the worst things of working at Maven? Let's start with you, Craig. Oh, man. <laughs> the best things and the worst things? Yeah. Um, I could say I could say it's Cade, 
Um, all in one. All, in, in, all like, in one. Best and worst. But uh, the best part would be incorrect. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you said you want. You said you wanted to talk shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Let them know. So, yeah. So, for me, the best thing is just my job. What I get to do. I mean, I have a dream job, kind of like what we were talking about last night over beers. Is that there's not many companies that have you know in house like creatives that are doing like the stuff that we're doing. They they hire out a lot you know to agencies, and the fact that I can play around in the studio, you know, do, do cool, like studio, you know, photo video. And then, you know, the next day go out on a hunt and, you know, just have, have cool experiences and, you know, get legit content and not actually, you know, like someone's actually hunting, you know, so it's, it's like, you don't always have, you know, the best lighting or, you know, the best situation. Um, but, uh, the content that we put out, it's, it's real stuff. It's not, you know, we do some shoots, but not, not a ton yeah. majority of it. Yeah. Most of it's not staged. It's actually exactly. hunting and, and exactly. tagging along and doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I, I love that part of my job and, um, I just love, yeah. Like, you know, kind of staying in tune with what the rest of the industry is doing. You know, I do a lot of ad work, so it's, it's fun to work with, um, you know, ads and, and, uh, backbone media who we work with quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, that you that you're aware of, um, so yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of cool to strategize on that stuff. Yeah, and I mean, you get to do some pretty cool uh, trips. Was it was it a part of like was it a photo shoot when you went up to Alaska caribou hunting? Was that? Yeah, so we did a. Uh, it was it, it kind of took several different turns, but ultimately ended up being an outdoor life um, piece on yeah doing a, it, was, it was a float trip for caribou. So uh, me and a few other people went up there and yeah, we just got to, um, yeah, hike in, uh, what is it? Uh, I think it's five miles, um, where you can, uh, so you can archery hunt within the first five miles. There's a buffer oh, of the, the, the hall road. road. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we, so I wasn't actually hunting, um, but, but I had, had my camera gear. So the guys I was, I was with, they had rifles and bows. <laughs> so if they had an opportunity, um, they could shoot one with their bow. Um, but ultimately it turned out that, yeah, we had to get beyond that just to find caribou. So, um, yeah, uh, they took a couple caribou and then we floated them out and it was, yeah, it's kind of one of those epic, you know, you know, bucket list things that, you know, not everyone gets to do. So. No, that's, that's really cool. Is that, so did you, did you actually shoot a caribou? Um, I didn't shoot one on that trip, but the, I went, um, a couple years prior to that, and okay. I did shoot one. Yeah, is that yours in the warehouse? It is. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's the biggest caribou in the in the building, <laughs> <laughs> and the only one. The only one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that. oh, yeah, it's, it's funny to see. Or it's cool to see like all the employees, you know, mounts and stuff that are hung up because you have the the pronghorn lounge. Is it the pronghorn lounge? It's called the which is where we ate last night, and it's all pronghorn. From everybody here that has has killed pronghorn, hung up the euro mounts, and then the paintings, and down to everything in there. It's it's pretty much themed. Yeah, yeah. My like little teeny buck from. <laughs> I saw it. I saw you know, it. Kate just, showed me. Yeah, it. my yeah. little teeny. And guy. and Mike's Mike's doe that has the, the little horns. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah, that one's awesome. <laughs> Where's is that out in the warehouse too? I, I think it's. I don't know I where think that. It's upstairs, is. isn't it? It's probably upstairs. So we it had it hanging up, in like on the end, isn't it? I, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot up there. I don't know. I'm the new guy. I don't know where everything is yet. <laughs> um, so, yeah, back to your original question. Um, yeah, I, I just like having the the freedom to do cool stuff. And yeah. To, Brennan kind of gives me the reins. And we, we have, um, I think we're in tune with, like, what we like, you know? Like, we have the same aesthetic or at least, an, a, you know, heavy overlap. Um, so I, I feel comfortable knowing what I'm working on that he's, he's going to like, and he's fine putting out there, but you know, he's also honest too. If, if he doesn't like it, then he's like, Nope, let's do something different kind of thing. Yeah. So No, yeah, we were talking about that quite a bit last night as far as like how, how you guys work together. And it's just like, all right, if you know, if he doesn't like it, he tells you and, and you know, you're like, okay. And, and kind of move through it. Yeah. And then, uh, on the, on the other end, the thing that I don't like <laughs> about, <laughs> about Maven is 
probably, and this is true with any job, like you have like these stressful times where you're trying to like do everything all at once. Um, product launch, you know, launches are, are, you know, those are very important things to us. And so we want to make sure it's presented right. Everything looks as best it can. So when it comes down to crunch time and we have to get everything done, we have to check all these boxes and not just on our end, but everyone's end, you know, that can get a little stressful, especially yeah. if it happens to be during the holidays and we're also working on like holiday sales. Um, yeah, there's, there's, a whole, there's a whole slew of things that most people have no idea what goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. So, yeah. But if that's what I have to complain about, then that's... That's, that's pretty good. That was, that was a good answer. <laughs> Sarah? Yeah, I'm like, oh, jeez. Um, She's like, I was just about to really put them on. I know. The I was like, and now I'm going to have to come up with something delightful No, you got to you gotta be, you gotta okay. be honest. Um, <laughs> okay. So what should I do first? Favorite or least favorite? Let's do with the favorite. Favorite? Okay. So you going to end on a bad note. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I agree with Craig that like there's an experience part um, that we get to participate in. That's pretty neat. I was a pretty new hunter when I started at Maven. And so uh, in the four years I've been here, I've like gotten in the field a lot, um, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, most of my gear has been gifts from the guys, which is awesome too. I like stayed very warm this winter yeah. as I was like hiking around. Um, and so that part's cool. Um, I came from a state job where I was doing small business consulting. Um, and after seven years in the job where I kind of butted up against consistently is I couldn't help businesses implement things um, because our funding didn't allow for that. So we would get to a point with small business and say, okay, well either you have to hire someone to do it or um, I can teach you how to do it, but like I physically can't do it for you. Um, and so that's been the fun part for me at Maven is that uh, I get pulled into conversations and the guys say, here's the problem. Yeah. Here uh, you go. <laughs> here you go. Uh, and then I get to like kind of noodle through all the pieces of it, come up with some solutions and then implement them. Yeah. Um, and so that for me is like checks that box, um, which is pretty fun uh, yeah. and pretty cool. No, that, that is, that is awesome. So you, you're new to hunting when you came mm -hmm. in here. Yeah. Uh, so I hunted the first, my first time with a program, um, out of Sheridan in 2017. Um, so I had, you know, had two, se three seasons under my belt when I started at Maven. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that's really cool. And, and so do you get, I mean, do you get much time to be able to do that with, with work? Do they let you do that? They do let me, I mean, more than... I think my previous, yeah. um, yeah, I've gotten to take advantage of uh, a couple of things. My first year, uh, I got to go to Turkey camp. I like chased Craig around the black Hills in the knee deep snow. I like thought for a while I wasn't going to come home. It was like that <laughs> one, there was that one afternoon where I thought Craig was trying to kill me. I think I know which one. You're um, talking about. yeah. Uh, but it got better after that. It got better after that. Um, but like I, Kate and I, I think hunted, 20 days together this year so um like that was great yeah wow that's hot what were you hunting for um i shot a deer out up in sheridan uh, we go and he and i go and volunteer for this event um and so we went we also hunted there and then um i harvested my first elk this year awesome um, so i spent a lot of time like walking around looking for one yeah I'm still not convinced that they're like something that's real in the wild. I have this theory that there's like a green screen somewhere and people go and they pose. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's that. Yeah. Um, but it came together in January. So that's cool. Oh, just this like yep. last month. Mm -hmm. Congrats. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Made a great shot too. Yeah. And there is, there is uh, an Instagram post on it too. So is there yeah. on the Maven page? Yep. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. Mm hmm. That's awesome. And uh, uh, what was I going to say? I, I th I've learned that the Maven crew, everybody that works here, they all have pretty full freezers at this point. Yeah. It's been a good year. Yeah. yeah. I also like stress bought a cow this summer because <laughs> I didn't pull any, I like didn't pull any limited quota tags and I got nervous and I was like, well, I just want the freezer to be full. So I did have to buy a freezer after mm. I shot the elk. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> no. My husband kept being like, what are you going to do with it? I'm like, I don't know yet. Yeah. Yeah. We'll figure it out. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the worst part of work at Maven? 
Um, I mean, I agree with Craig that there are like these like times that bubble up where it feels like you can't actually do all the things on the uh, on the to do list. Um, and and I think like the hard deadlines, show dates, um, product launches, things like that. Right? There's always like a whole bunch of flurry around. Yeah. Um, I have a personal love hate relationship with our inventory software. Um, that's like a very specific pain point. That's mine alone. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, not too bad. Uh, and, and Craig, I do know you need to go to an appointment here. So if you if you need to bust out, you, you're welcome to. And we'll About just wrap five, up. Five more minutes. Five more minutes? Okay, cool. Well, let's, Jordan, you've only been here for three months. Maybe you don't have a, a whole lot. But what do, what, do, what do you like about working here? Well, I think what I like uh, the most about here, and this is going to sound kind of cookie cutter, but it's true, the, the people um, – Everybody in this building is incredibly, uh, incredibly proficient at what what we do or what they do. I'm still getting used. To it. I don't think I've ever done a podcast with the over ear on, so yeah, I'm getting used to it. Um, but yeah, everyone here is very proficient at what they do. Um, they're meticulous about what they do. They care about their jobs. They care about other people. And uh, I got to experience that when I was first starting off training in all the different departments. Um, and then just seeing like the type of workload that everybody takes on to make this, this machine go, uh, it's really impressive. And so everyone's been super helpful and, and very kind and, uh, learned a lot. And so each, it seems like each week I take on a new responsibility or two and learn yeah. a little bit more. Um, but right now just you know, getting boxes where they need to be and, and, and ultimately making sure that the inventory that we have in the back, uh, kind of marries up to the broader strategic vision for the company and, and kind of where we want to be. So it seems like we could have been nicer and said our coworkers too. No, you had to leave that as a layup. You had to <laughs> no, that that's one. not what <laughs> came to the front yeah. of your mind. Yeah. I'm like, so, oh yeah, those people. Uh, right. Yeah, no, wait, wait, no, wait for this one. My least favorite part of the job is that I don't get to work with Cade more often. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> no, he, no, he's been awesome too. Um, I think the, my least favorite part of the job is that we haven't hired anybody else yet because I'm still the uh, FNG and all of our group chats and everything and. Um, yeah, you're, you're so the new eventually guy. Eventually, I'll be like one rung up on the totem pole, but I'm still at the bottom right now. Yeah, start at the bottom. You're yeah. still there. Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's awesome. And I also, have, I've heard that you're the resident Botech. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I kind of kind of put that on myself, I guess, early on. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been, I, I really enjoy archery. I've got damn near a pro shop in my basement at home. And, yeah. Uh, we did a little Maven indoor archery tournament this winter, and it was cool to see everybody come out and practice a little bit. Uh, anytime I you believe could, I didn't get an MVP trophy. You should have. I should have. You should have. We'll, we'll campaign I should for have. that. You did pretty good? Yeah. No, I'm very bad. Oh. <laughs> but I was the most improved. Yeah. Well, that's not an MVP. That's a most improved. Well, I kept doing it, which I feel like. You should get something. <laughs> I did like hit the very back wall of the warehouse in a way that is. You did miss the target once, maybe twice. Do we? <laughs> <laughs> very obviously most improved, though, Cr- by the end of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did great. Just extra work for Chris. He yeah. Did yeah, just a little bit. Spackled some of those holes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's. It's been fun. Uh, the participation was awesome for that. And then I think anytime you can avoid the the plague of not touching your bow until a week before season is always a good thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's cool. I, it's funny because I have um, – so I have a, like basically an archery shop set up in my basement too. I used to work in an archery shop and then I you know, I would buy like the used equipment when they'd get upgraded stuff. So I got a press and I slowly like built – everything but i try not to tell too many people that especially that are like local because then everybody comes to me of wanting their oh, stuff yeah. fixed yeah oh Jordan you think made i the could mistake do this of telling me so, so yeah. Now. yeah no we got <laughs> anybody in this building the services are uh, are certainly available um but i do have a buddy we were out at the bar the other night and there are a couple of guys that he works with and he's like this is the uh the guy that has the archery shop i was telling you about and then i had to pull him to the side and like hey listen here bud <laughs> 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 you know, yeah, you want to start helping people out. That's that's all good. But you better have your own pro shop, yeah. right? I've got it. I got my my hands full right now. Yeah, <laughs> it's been good. We've done a couple three D shoots already indoors this year, and uh, sounds like we're going to have some three D targets put here at Maven mm-hmm. out back. So yeah, I think we'll have our own little range. So we have an indoor range in the where in the upstairs in the warehouse, so we can get out to about forty yards, and then yeah, as soon as things warm up, we'll have some three D targets. Uh, outside so that'll be that'll be fun that'll be good 
Yeah, that's awesome. Well, cool guys. I know you got to get run here, Craig. So we'll we'll end this. But yeah, I wanted to to hear a little bit from from all of you. And I wish I was staying here a few more days to hang out. But got to head back to Pennsylvania. Yep. Next time. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Awesome. Yeah. yeah thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit eastmeetswesthunt.com, Facebook at East Meets West Outdoors, and Instagram at East Meets West Hunt. If you enjoyed today's episode, please review and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.